All right, so this is a simplified question, right? It's very short. It's only um, a little over a line long. We have this function that's provided to us. So we know they're going to, we're going to do a lot of work with the actual function, simplifying it in some way. So this question says, for what value of x is the function h above undefined? And that word undefined is extremely important because h of x is a fraction. In order for a fraction to be undefined, right? So fraction a, fraction, is undefined when you have this situation, right? I'll say x over 0 because x can be anything equals anything, right? The numerator can be whatever it wants. It's the denominator being 0 that causes the function or the fraction to be undefined. So if I want h of x to be undefined, that means I actually want the denominator to equal 0. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this denominator equal to 0 because that's the thing, right? If the x value that makes that denominator equal to 0 is the x value that makes the entire function undefined. So I'm going to just set it equal to 0. So now here comes the simplification. So this was a simplified question from the start because it's a short question. That's the strategy that I'm going to use. This is a, a bit harder than most simple or usual or typical simplified questions um, because you do have to understand what this undefined means. But here we go. So I'm going to simplify this by, first of all, expanding this x minus 5. And I'll just write all the steps out for you. So I'm not skipping anything so you can see all of my math. So I'm going to FOIL uh, this here. So I get x times x, which is x squared, and then x times negative 5, which is minus 5x, and then negative 5 times x, which is another minus 5x, and negative 5 times negative 5, which is a positive 25. Then I have 4 times x, distributing the 4 across everything in the parentheses, which is a positive 4x and then a 4 times negative 5, which is minus 20. I have my plus 4, and now it's all about combining like terms. I only have a single x squared term. Negative 5x minus 5x is negative 10x, plus 4x would be negative 6x, and then I have 25 minus 20, which is 5, plus 4, which would be 9, still equals zero. And now I need to do some factoring, right? So it's kind of reverse FOIL, um, factoring a trinomial. So what I'm going to do, what I always do when I see a trinomial that I need to factor is I create my two sets of parentheses or my set of parentheses. I know that in order to get an x squared by multiplying the two first positions, I need an x here and an x there. I then go to the last position. Um, I want to multiply this times this and get a positive nine. But then when I add those two values together, I want a negative 6. So negative 3 accomplishes that because negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. So what I truly have here is x minus 3 squared equals 0, right? Because I have two of these, so it's, I can just write it as squared. So I can square root both sides, giving me that x minus 3 is equal to 0. And therefore, when I add 3 to both sides, I'm left with x is equal to 3. So x equals 3 is the solution here. It is the x value that if I plug it in to my denominator, it will make the denominator undefined. If you have time at the end of the test and you're doing this, and you want to just check and make sure, by all means, throw this 3 in to the x's here. We can even do it really quickly. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Uh, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is uh, negative 8. And then we have the plus 4. Um, and we want to see what that equals. 4 minus 8 is negative 4 plus 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So we checked our answer, and we know that we're correct.